This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Cherry Hemminghouse Weeks. So glad you've joined us. On this program, we're going to enjoy a conversation with Dr. Ed Meadows, the president of Pensacola State College, and his special guest, the chancellor of the Florida College System, Madeline Pumariega. Chancellor Pumariega oversees the division of Florida colleges, including more than 800,000 students from 28 public, state, and community colleges. We welcome Chancellor Pumariega to Pensacola, and we welcome both the Chancellor and Dr. Ed Meadows to our program today. So, as I said, welcome. So glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. You came all the way from Tallahassee. We're honored. Thank you. Happy you know, to be here. Well, Florida is such a big state, and a lot of times people will call and they'll say, I'm here, I'm in Miami, and you <laughs> say, well, we're way up here. So it's great to, great to have you here. Well, uh, Sherry, uh, we're glad that uh, the Chancellor could accommodate her schedule to be here today with us. And uh, I, I thought it was extremely important that uh, the citizens of Northwest Florida had an opportunity to hear from the Chancellor of the Florida College System. Uh, she and I work very closely together uh, as the President of Pensacola State and also uh, this year the, the Chair of the Council on Presidents. Uh, she is a, a true advocate uh, for uh, higher education in particular, the Florida College System, and uh, she has a very interesting story that I hope we get into a little bit later about uh, how she came, became uh, the Chancellor uh, and all that preceded that. Absolutely, and I think that's a great place to kick things off because I looked into it a little bit, and <laughs> quite amazing story that you have. First Hispanic, yes, correct, first woman, Yes. Breaking all kinds of glass ceilings <laughs> there, aren't you? Congratulations. Thank you. For someone who may not know, what does a chancellor do? So the chancellor oversees uh, the 28 colleges that make up the Florida college system. And so Florida, when it was established, had the foresight to make sure that there was access to education in all of our communities. And so we have colleges throughout our 67 counties that have service areas that they serve. And the chancellor has the privilege uh, to over uh, see all of those colleges and work closely with the presidents of those colleges and the district board of trustees to make sure that we're responding to those community needs. And so it is a privilege because Florida is among the best in terms of college systems across the country and our institutions are among the best. And who says that? Lots, and so lots of folks do. The Aspen Institute is almost like the Heisman Trophy of um, college prizes. And since it's been being awarded, Florida has either won or had a finalist. And just this wow. year, we have again, two in the top 10, and uh, 17 of our institutions competed uh, for the Aspen Institute Award. And so that's one way. And there's other organizations that rank systems across the board. And we rank always in high in terms of graduation, affordability, job placement, and just the type of quality of programs and our faculty in our system. That's amazing. And now you've been in this position for about a year and a half now. Yes. What types of things are you, are you seeing um, as you come in areas that, um, that, we, that you're really super excited about working on, just in a nutshell, because I want to hear the rest of your story. So I think as we continue access um, and we increase the number of students going on to college, I think that our colleges are doing a phenomenal job in reaching back into the high schools and offering dual enrollment opportunities and accelerating pathways for students to finish college. And I think the second aspect, the way that we respond to workforce needs, that a workforce leader and partner can come to a college and in really no time build a program that helps put students students right to work. And so it's that great combination of what we do in terms of access and the workforce readiness aspect of it. And was this important for you as a young person? Um, you're coming from a unique 
perspective of having come up to this position? You didn't just start in this position. Tell us about that. So um, I, you know, grew up in Hialeah, which is a, a small town in, in Miami, a hardworking uh, town. And, and um, I graduated from high school and thought I'd go to college. My mom said I should go maybe enroll in the community college at the corner. I played basketball, and so I went over and saw the athletic director, the only person I knew, and I signed a letter of intent that day and started to play basketball at Miami-Dade College and um, wrapped up there and went on and graduated and then came back and started as an assistant coach and then a part-time academic advisor, became a full-time academic advisor and left after 20 years as a campus president of the downtown campus of Miami-Dade. And um, then I went off to Take Stock in Children, which is a program that um, serves every county in the state of Florida and helps uh, break the cycle of poverty through education, mentors, and hope. And um, I was doing that and love that program, uh, the impact it makes to students um, that are in poverty and don't have an access or a pathway to college. And through a mentor and a scholarship and wraparound services, they come to college. Uh, when I was asked to lead the college system. And so it really is a privilege because I started. Um, I'm a product of it. I know the impact that we make. I know the difference it made in my life. And I know the work that our faculty, our staff, and the leaders in our system are dedicated to. I'd like to say that we are, in a way, dream factories. Students arrive to us with the dream of um, getting an education to get that job and provide for their families. And by providing an enormous amount of services and programs and access to them, we do that. And um, it's just great and a privilege to be a chancellor of our college system. And Sherry, mm -hmm. um, the chancellor actually um, never lost her affiliation with the Florida college system because it takes stock in children. The whole goal is to get them in college. And virtually every uh, one of our colleges, uh, we have take stock in children um, enrolled from high school in our institutions. And Pensacola State is no exception to that. So she worked very closely. As a matter of fact, that's the first time I met you, Chancellor, is when you were uh, the executive director of take stock in children. We had a, um, a statewide meeting. Uh, so I met you a couple of years prior to you coming to the division. It really is a great program and it's certainly changing lives throughout Florida. And with your unique perspective, um, how do you come into a college and, and help? Do you uh, act as an advisor? Do you have certain ideas that you feel are um, needed to be implemented or how does that work? So one of the things that I think that we do so well at the system office and with our college is a share best practice. So I may come and visit Pensacola State and share with them something that one of our other colleges might be doing around workforce readiness or increasing the graduation rates or a mandatory orientation program. So I think that it's a two role, not only helping and advising where appropriate, but most importantly sharing the best practice that's happening so that we can try to scale and replicate all of the great things that are happening at all of our institutions. And there's no better way than coming and sharing with our campus, with our college presidents and, and campus leadership about something that's happening. And we every year have a Chancellor's Best Practice Award and that's what we try to do is go ahead and identify different programs, whether it's a, a college using simulation to be able to advance nursing techniques to a partnership that led to scholarships and jobs to a way that increases the number of students that are passing math. And so we share those uh, best practices through the system. I would imagine that's quite an incentive for the colleges to have those kind of best practices. We'll come back and talk some more about that in Thanks. just a moment. We're going to take a short break and then when we return, we'll continue our conversation with Chancellor Mariega and Dr. Ed Meadows. Stay right here.
Welcome back to Pensacola State Today. We're talking with the Florida College System Chancellor, Madeline Pumariega, who is here with us from Tallahassee, and Dr. Ed Meadows, president of Pensacola State College. So we wanted to talk about in this segment who our students are. Who are our students? So um, the Florida College System enrolls 800,000 students across Florida, our 28 institutions. Um, the average age of our students, 26, 60% 60 are women, and 65% are enrolled part-time because they are working while they study. And so 65% of the students who graduate from Florida high schools enroll in the Florida college system after they finish high school. And so we have strong partnerships with our universities because we're the pathway into the universities. Um, and then we also have many returning adults that come back to retool or get that second career and are oftentimes balancing small children and aging parents. And uh, because of the flexible course scheduling, the small class sizes, and the focus on workforce training, they come back to one of our colleges uh, to get that second career. And many of our students also um, come in just for a class or two because they want to continue uh, to sharpen their skills in the area that they're in, especially when you think about technology and how quickly it emerges. Uh, you might have students that come in and just take two or three coding courses because it helps them get that raise at work or sharpen those skills. And how does uh, Pensacola State College come in on all of this? Do you find it to be a, a friendly and good place for people that are looking for those kinds of additional skills to well, be? Well, I need to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure she hears what's going on up here. But well, I, she can, she can yeah. agree with me or right. disagree I'd love with to me. Hear but that. Uh, you know, our demographics almost um, mirror completely what she just said mm -hmm. in terms of the average. Uh, we do have uh, a one, only one year difference in the average age of 27 versus 26. Uh, but certainly, um, you know, the, the other characteristics of uh, a lot of single parents, uh, because 60% of our student population is female. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that I, I got to say that uh, the demographics that she gave, that, that mirrors us almost perfectly, and, and particularly with the adult learners coming back for workforce skills uh, and the many stackable uh, certificates that we offer in, in different programs allows them to take a few classes instead of a whole degree program uh, to get um, a specific skill and certification, uh, in, particularly in technology fields, Chancellor. We talk about two plus two. Um, what does that mean and, and what can you tell us about that? You mentioned friendly and I want to mm -hmm. say something that <laughs> Pensacola State College by two different national organizations has been touted and ranked among the very best for military friendly campus. And so we do a lot of work with our returning vets and having tuition waiver programs, um, job placement services, career services, and Pensacola is a model really for the way that they deliver services to our returning veterans. Um, and our colleges look to them as, as a leader, uh, not only in Florida, but across the nation. So when you speak about friendly, I immediately thought about the kind of veteran friendly campus and college that really the colleges in Northwest Florida are, but especially Pensacola with its location. Well, that's where the best practice you were talking about earlier, you can share the successes here at Pensacola State College and other Northwest Florida colleges, as you mentioned, as being best yes. practice and share that with other colleges, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So we did want to talk about the two plus two. Can you elaborate on the, the partnership there? Sure. So Florida two plus two program is really a national model. Um, it's on the basis of a student who completes their Associates of Arts, those first two years of the baccalaureate program at one of our colleges is admitted into one of our universities. Florida has 12 phenomenal state universities and 28 phenomenal state colleges and the two plus two partnership is how students transfer from our colleges to our universities. 53% of the juniors and seniors that are enrolled in our universities 
come from the Florida college system. Wow. And so we're that pathway for our students to enter the university. They may not be able to enter as freshmen. They might need to be home for two years, maybe get the additional savings so they can work on those first two years, redefine their major, make sure they're on that pathway, and then they're off to one of our universities uh, to finish their baccalaureate programs. When you talk about savings, I imagine there are substantial st savings in doing it in, in this way. Absolutely, our tuition is significantly less, so students are able to, to save in those first 60 credits and then be able to, in some cases, they can go away to a university, but what we find is many of our students um, stay home, and so they go and attend the university that's closest to home. And um, here at you know University of West Florida is the pathway for so many of the Pensacola State College uh, students to head on for their baccalaureate degrees. And the majority of our AA transfer students do uh, attend the University of West Florida uh, because uh, many of them are place bound, um, and um, that the cost savings uh, to attend Pensacola State is roughly half of what it would cost to attend a university for tuition and fees. And uh, I do, we do have uh, a limited number of baccalaureate workforce baccalaureate degrees, and they're about 75% on average of the cost of a university uh, if they were to, to go um, to a university for um, a, um, associate, uh, a bachelor's of science mm -hmm. degree. Uh, and the degrees we offer are not offered by the university, uh, so, but it's still, uh, less than a university. I was going to say, and even though it costs less, the um, the education quality is is outstanding. Absolutely, I think one of the hallmarks of our of our college system is the combination of the mission. Our primary mission um, is really the associate programs. Last year, the system graduated 113,000 students. 50% um, graduated with their Associates of Arts. Mm -hmm. And then the next big graduation number was the Associates in Science, the nurses, the RN degrees leading right into jobs, certificate programs, the kind of certificate programs that in six months to a year, you finished uh, a program and you're working. And then just a little under 7,000 of the 113,000 graduated with a workforce baccalaureate degree. And that means that the only way one of our colleagues Colleges offers a workforce baccalaureate degree is that there's a demand for that specific job and that training in the community. Um, and that has to be documented by in employers and all of the employment agencies as well. And so there's a small part of that and that really speaks to our access mission. The primary mission is really our Associates of Arts and being that gateway to higher education for most Floridians. Um, whether they're pursuing the two plus two pathway, a degree that leads them right to a job, or advancing a degree they already have by finishing up a baccalaureate in a workforce area. Boy, you make, make it something for everyone, absolutely. So much more to talk about, and uh, when we return, we'll continue this fascinating discussion. Keep it tuned right here. Welcome back. You're watching Pensacola State Today on WSRE TV, PBS for the Gulf Coast. On our program today, we are joined by Dr. Ed Meadows, the president of Pensacola State College, and especially visiting us from Tallahassee, the Florida College System Chancellor, Madeline Pumariega. So glad to have you here. So, I was just so asking you, have you traveled all over the state? Or you, we've got, what, 28 colleges? 28 colleges, 67 counties. From one end to another, it's a lot of hours, but well, yep, I spend a lot of time on the Florida Turnpike I-75 and I-10. <laughs> but you're getting to know people, you're getting to know needs, and you're, then you're able to be, I would imagine, even more effective. I think the diversity of Florida and the richness of our communities, whether you're rural, metropolitan, you're out. You know, we have, I think, over 70 campuses. Some are out in the suburbs and in specific neighborhoods and areas and others in rural areas. And 
I learned from Take Stock and Children and my time at Take Stock that you never really understand a community until you visit with them and you understand what their needs are, why they're offering the kinds of programs, what kind of resources would be beneficial to them. And so there's lots of consistency that unites Florida and, and makes us the great state that we are. But inside and deeper in the pockets of our communities, um, once you're out there, you find the gems and the treasures and you also find ways that we can help reach more students um, and provide more access and affordability to students throughout all of our communities. Speaking of affordability, the governor has shown a commitment to that through textbooks and, and reaching out trying to make things more affordable for all Floridians. Is that true and how is that affecting things? So the, the governor, along with the legislature, passed really a hallmark, his hallmark piece of legislation, which was college access and affordability last year. And so our college is building upon already a long tradition of finding cost savings and energy efficient ways and maximizing resources, uh, put together a study. And so many best practices emerged from there. And one of the things that we found was textbook affordability. All of our colleges, and especially at Pensacola and all of the Gulf Coast colleges really are working on how can we um, have textbooks provided to students at much lower cost. We know that students that don't arrive onto our college campus with a textbook the first day are at a disadvantage, but we also know they're so expensive. And so they're working on online materials, open resource materials, our faculty, uh, because they're focused on teaching and learning and not necessarily just publishing. They're doing faculty handbook manuals and providing it to students. And the governor, uh, just launched his commitment by having tax free on textbooks and that's another way that cost that has a cost savings directly to students is to not text those not tax those textbooks when they do need to purchase them and through our bookstores we have ways that students can rent a book for a semester if that's all they need it for um, so along with the ten thousand dollar degrees holding tuition um, and all of the strategies, we are making college accessible and affordable um, because it's so important for students to have that post-secondary credential to compete in this global economy. And Dr. Meadows, what would you say to parents or students that are watching that may be interested in coming themselves? Can, can it be affordable? Well, I, I think that through our foundation, uh, some scholarships cover tuition fees and books. Uh, and certainly um, the way in which uh, our faculty uh, develop their own materials for students in some of our courses. Uh, but, you know, textbook affordability is a national concern. Uh, it's not just a, a, a Florida concern. So there, uh, are, even, there's, uh, there are ways in which institutions can join uh, textbook clearinghouses. Uh, and the rental, a textbook rental has been a really uh, boost for our students uh, to, to lessen the, the cost of textbooks. And oftentimes textbooks uh, are as much as the total tuition. Wow. So it, it is of great concern, but you can't be um, paying, you can't be a penny wise and pound foolish for parents. So if, if, you're gonna, if you're going to attend college yourself or if you're going to send your, uh, your child to college, you also have to make sure that you've provided enough financial resources to buy the materials that are needed for a student to be successful. I'm so happy that's being looked at. We wanted to also talk about attainment. Um, what are your thoughts there? So an important initiative that the Higher Education Coordinating Council, which is made up of um, education and business leaders across the state, as well as policymakers, is looking at how Florida can embrace an attainment goal. And what we say by attainment is how many what percentage of our population between the age of 25 and 64 have a post-secondary credential? A certificate, an associate's, a bachelor's, or beyond? Why that's important is because it's a good gauge on how well prepared Florida will be in meeting the talent pipeline of our industry partners. We know, as I said, 63% of the jobs created last year across the country required a post-secondary credential. 
Right now, Florida is at about 47%. And so we're working with our local colleges and local college access networks and high schools and business partners on finding ways that we can increase the number of students that go on to college, that when they're in college, they finish. And those returning adults that might have started, that they finish their degree. So we can increase that number from 47% to 60%. Um, and that way, that allows Florida to remain a top competitor for not only attracting new businesses here, but growing our existing businesses, and especially in emerging fields. And that business leaders can feel confident that in Florida, they will have the workforce that they need to grow. And do you find more and more business leaders and owners being willing to help in these areas, recognizing the importance of these post-secondary educations? I think so. In all of our uh, workforce programs, all of our associate and science programs, each one of those programs have advisory boards. And the advisory boards are made up of business leaders that help shape the curriculum, help bring the expertise that they need. In many cases, they put together scholarship programs. Um, they know that having that workforce and that pipeline of talented individuals means success for their business and that we're partners in working in that. We have about 30 seconds. Do we have final thoughts from either of you? This has been a fantastic discussion. Florida has the best college system and you should know that here in Northwest Florida, you have the top institutions, not only in our colleges and universities as well. And so sometimes when you're in your own backyard, you think, oh, I'm not sure, maybe at another state, but there should be a lot of pride for Floridians in the type of access uh, to high quality education that we have across the state in our Florida college system, as well as our state university system. And that, that is a statement that rings uh, true uh, so well with parents who have children that want to go somewhere else, uh, the very fact that the very best is already here. So uh, for parents that are listening out mm -hmm. there, uh, you come to the Panhandle mm -hmm. uh, State Colleges and you're at the very best. That's wonderful information. Appreciate both of you letting our viewers know about that. And I hope to visit with you again on a future edition. Sure, best thanks of, for having us. Absolutely, best of luck. Well, that does it for this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Sherry Hemminghouse-Weeks. We'll see you again soon on a future broadcast.